then we contradict ourselves. That's why I told you, I said, now everybody is going, everybody is preaching, everybody is going to take the gospel everywhere. Every Sunday, now when we finish the service, at the end of the service, whether it's combined service or it's your local service, in your district, in your group, anywhere, the moment we finish, we go into the world to preach the gospel to every creature. I want to see the pastor. We'll see we want for the pastor. Now, if you're sick, tell the brother around you, I have this problem. Can you lay hands on me? You will recover. I said you will recover. We don't have to wait for some special people now, appointed people, anointed people, the pastor or this one or that one. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and at the right, he sat at the right hand of God. And they, and he did what? And they did what? And they did what? Tell me, applaud everybody. They went forth. That's you know, obedience. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, we must obey. Obey. It is so we obey the word of God, and the signs will follow us. And as we're finishing here today, this is not the end. This is the beginning. Beginning of spiritual activity and beginning of going forth everywhere. So that as you go, as you go, as you go, as you, as everybody goes, then the preaching of the gospel is taking place everywhere. And many people are coming to know the Lord in Jesus' name. And they went forth and they preached. What did they preach? Where did they preach? Everywhere the Lord walking with them. The people that are going to see the Lord walking with them in Pentecostal power. In Pentecostal supernatural anointing. They are the people that go forth. They went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them with signs following, confirming the word. There's an amen there that is left for you. Where are you? Amen. Or looking at chapter 24 of Luke, Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 45 then. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I pray that as we are going through all these verses of scripture, the Lord will open your understanding in Jesus' name. You know the tragedy of people that come to a retreat like this, and the Lord is revealing to us His word, but then they just they see in the past, and while the future is coming on, while the Lord is leading us to something new, something higher, something greater, they're still bound in the past, and they allow their past to destroy their future. Listen to me, they allow their past to destroy their future. But in the case of these disciples, the Lord opened their eyes, opened their minds, opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And as we understand the scriptures, we are moving on. I said we are moving on. And then it says and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. In his name, among all nations, became at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. Ye are witnesses of these things. Then he said, in verse 49, he said, And behold, I said, The promise of my Father upon you, God tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And that power is to preach. That power is not just for you to sit at home. I've got the power. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got this. I've got that. It's the power to be a witness, an effective witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. As we go, there are people that will attempt to shut you up. There are people that will attempt to close the door. There are people that will attempt to stop you where you are. And then that's the time you need to bring out the strength you have, the power you have, and the de and decision and the courage of conviction that you have. That this is your very life. 
Anybody trying to take preaching away from you is only taking your life away. It's the very center of your life and it's the focus of your life and it is the only thing you are living for to preach the gospel. This is what the Lord has given us. All the other things we are doing, He has not commanded us to do them. Let me remind you again. We do many things in the church, they are wonderful. Many things in the church, they are wonderful. But you know, sometimes we emphasize and we focus on the thing the Lord has not commanded us to do. And then we abandon the things he has told us to do. I told you during the retreat that he has not commanded us to sing, to raise up a choir, to raise up an orchestra. But a church that loves music like we do, we emphasize the singing and the orchestra more than the preaching of the word of God. And once we want to come back to the Bible, that he, evangelism, is the number one thing. He has commanded us. He told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It has time for singing, we'll see. And the apostles will sing first. And the preachers will sing first because it is a singing of the apostle, no, no instrument, nothing. Because I read it to you in the Bible of Philippi. Paul and Silas sang, and there was no instrument, and the power came from heaven. As we are coming back to the Bible, there are some people that you know they say that we don't love the church anymore, they don't want anything anymore, they are going back home and they are sad and all that because we are saying, Look at what Jesus said. Evangelism is the number one thing. And all the other things we are doing, if they support evangelism, great. If they are going to hinder the preaching of the word, we are going to push them aside and throw them away. That's why I'm bringing you back to the world. We are going to go back to the world. I said we are going to go back to the world. And I told you there are people who are going back to the world that will stand in our way. I said, no, you will not go. No, you will not go. You will not. That thing we want, bring it. What Jesus wants, take that away. What we want, do that. And we are seeing here that what Jesus Christ has commanded will be number one in this church. In a good morning. And I'm saying this for headquarters church. I'm saying this for all the regions in Nigeria. I'm saying this for all the local churches in Nigeria. I'm saying this for all the churches all over Africa. The people who are in this church, if you're a member of the church, you come for the word. The word is going to be number one. Whatever else we do, if it cancels evangelism, if it cancels church planting, if it cancels the great commission, we are going to say no to you. We are going to say no to all those things. You better just make up your mind. If you are going to worship in this church, if you are going to remain in this church, we are going to join hands and hearts together. And we are going to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. That's how we started. When we started in our retreats, we need to emphasize all these other things. Our emphasis was you come into the retreat, you hear the word of God, and then you move on. You want to obey the word of God. We are coming back to that in Jesus' name. I said we are coming back to that in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, listen, I'm serious now. Anyone, preacher, anyone, overstep, anyone, pastor, anyone, coordinator, that will contradict the word of God, two cannot work together except that they are great. If I discover that you support something, that you will cancel the jealousy, whoever you are, I just tell you, we cannot work together except we are agreed. And this is what the Lord has given us. And so, if you love me, and you love Christ, and you love the Bible, you love the church, and you love the people of the world who are, who are perishing, we we'll come into agreement together. The same thing with the members of the choir. The same thing with the orchestra. We are not agonizing anybody. If you love the church, if you love Christ, if you love the Great Commission, if you love what we are saying, if you put your singing under the preaching of the Word, and you make your singing 
the thought, the preaching of the word, will work together. They were in agreement. When I tell you stop singing, let's go and evangelize. You stop. We're in agreement. When I say okay, sing only for two minutes because we want to preach for two hours, and then you do that. Once we're in agreement, they will go together. If you say no, we want to do our own will, I say no, sir, no, madam. We we'll see now and let us emphasize the same thing together and i'm calling on the whole church to support the word of christ and to support where your pastors and god has given you a pastor he appointed me to be your pastor and i'm your father in the lord and god gives me the word i give it to you and you say yes amen we're in agreement together can i have your amen yeah. witness to you do the work of the Lord. That's what the Lord has given us. And in the whole nation of our churches, we're going back to the word of God. In all the countries of Africa, we're going back to the word of God. In Europe, America, everywhere, we're going back to the word of God. Look at this. They try to stop them. They try to shut them up. And people still try to do that today, that day, that time, because the apostles have the power. The power to do what God had called them to do. And we have the same power here today. I said we have the same power here today. We're going to keep on standing whatever challenges we may have in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading to you from verse 27. And when they brought them, they stood them before the council. And the high priest asked them, Stay. Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? That's what we are living for. That's the only thing we are supposed to do. And then they commanded them, they said, We told you, don't preach in this name. And then it says, But now, behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles and servants said, We ought to obey God rather than tell me. Amen. We are going to say that together. We ought to obey God rather than men. Can you say that with me? We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Say that aloud. And I'm saying that Jesus commanded go and preach. He didn't command go and sing. I'm saying that Jesus commanded preach the gospel to every creature. Don't just stay in a local church and then doing all the merry go round and saying the same thing a thousand times to the same people. He said, go to new people, go to your neighbors, go to your community, and go everywhere and preach. And then there are some people they are setting us back and that they, they are kind of ridiculing us. They're saying church planting, church planting. They want church everywhere. Church over here and church over here. This new kind of thing that is coming. All these people are enemies of the gospel. But the people that are united together with Christ, they say, yes, that's what God said. If we have to abandon every other thing, if we have to push aside every other thing, this is what to do. And this is what our lives are meant for. That's why the apostles said, you cannot tell us not to teach. I know to preach, I know to evangelize, I know to win souls, Christ died. And he gave us the good news, go tell everybody. And then they said, we ought to obey God rather than, rather than men. And that is what we are all saying. That is what you are saying. I said that is what you are saying. And as we go out, we are going to do it in Jesus' name. Evangelism will be a focus. Reaching out to perishing souls will be our focus. That is what we gave our lives for. And that is what Christ has commanded us. We are going to do it in Jesus' name. And when we do it in the way He wants us to do it, and then we listen, emphasis on things that Christ has not commanded. And we exalt, we lift up what Jesus Christ has commanded. Exploits supernatural power, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow us in Jesus' name. 
And you know the people that are asking for miracles, you know, this will happen, this will happen. They will not happen except we concentrate on what Christ has given that power. The power to do miracles, what he has given it for. We're talking about expressly daily but Pentecostal witness every day. It's not just something you just do one day, one Saturday or one Sunday, and then you forget all about it. It's every day. Daily Pentecostal witness. I'm coming to your three points. Number one, the call. Number two, the concourse. And number three, the comforter. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. The call to daily persuasive Witness the call. That's a commandment. That's a commission. That's a call he has given us. And he says the call to daily persuasive witness. Number two, the conquerors with divine prevailing weapon. We have the weapon in our hand. We have the instrument in our hand. We have the tool in our hand. And he has given us this weapon. It's divine. And it makes us more than conquerors. The conquerors with divine prevailing weapon. Number three, the comforter and his penetrating wisdom. The comforter and the penetrating wisdom of the comforter of the spirit, not the wisdom of man that cannot obey God, but the wisdom of the spirit himself, the comforter and his penetrating wisdom. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. We're looking at Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1. We're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses not unto yourself. Witnesses not unto your denomination. Witnesses, not unto your friends, witnesses, not unto your own personal opinion, but witnesses unto Christ. What does that mean? That Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that he died to save sinners, and that his will 